Hello, friends. It's Kat from Yum Yum Kapow. Recently, we took a look at the Shinhan Professional set of 30 watercolors, and while your girl don't have the kind of scratch line around to buy 30 of the PWC colors, she did have enough referral credits on Jackson's to grab three tubes for this little primary triad. Thanks to everyone who has ever used the Jacksons or Amazon links down in the doobly-doo. You're literally the reason this video was possible, and I will continue to put all the materials down there so we can get more chances to play and explore in the future. Anyway, if you're only going to grab three paints and want to have the best range, it's always better to go with cool colors than warm colors. You can mostly mix warm-ish colors using cool colors, but can't mix cool colors from warm colors. Just something you can experiment with in the future. Therefore, I chose Permanent Rose, Lemon Yellow, and Peacock Blue, which also happened to be the most inexpensive cool tone primaries I could find, which was definitely part of the selection process. The Lemon Yellow I used from Daniel Smith is super transparent, so I was a little shocked to find out that the Lemon Yellow from Shinhan PWC is semi-opaque, but it's really not that big of a deal since yellow ends up having to fight tooth and nail for dominance in most mixes. If anything, this gives it a slight advantage and will help me use a little less of the paint overall. Laying down these colors in their pure swatches, as well as mixing them in a color wheel, I'm really impressed with how bright and intense these colors are. They certainly aren't shy about their pigmentation, I tell you what. They're also very bright and... pure. Like, I don't feel as though they've been muddied down at all with anything, and have a clarity to them that almost makes me want to give up on glasses and just wear paints on my eyeballs. You know, because of the clarity. I'll stop. And even though I didn't think too hard about just which pigments I was grabbing when I got these paints, I was also really delighted to find that they lift pretty well off the paper I'm using, which is just some Canson XL watercolor paper. Most Asian watercolors I've worked with also have two things about them that I personally don't prefer. They usually have almost no texture and are incredibly finely ground, and they also usually have almost no dispersion at all, meaning they don't really bloom when dropped onto a wet surface. As far as dispersion goes, they actually do have a small amount of flow. It's not crazy shoot across the page instant flow, but there is some and that makes it really easy to make gradual changes in color and gentle gradations. Curiously, these do have a very soft, barely noticeable texture that I would say is just south of being baby granulation. The blue in particular seems to be the culprit, though I know there is not a single shot in this video that will convince you of it since it's so subtle, I almost wonder if I'm imagining it? Still, it makes these paints not look flat and overly perfect, which is something I tend to avoid. Awesome! So far, I'm really surprised by these paints. Originally, I was only going to do the color wheel and swatches for these and save a real performance test for when we directly compare the Shinhan Professional to the Shinhan PWC, but, well, <laughs> I was tempted too much to the fun side. Whoops! These watercolors were actually a complete pleasure to work with. They move just well enough to make those nice soft shadows and blushy cheeks and whatnot, but aren't so out of control that you have to chase them down to stop them from making their mark all across the page. And even if you do misjudge them a bit, it doesn't really matter that much because the ease with which they lift makes it so simple to correct issues or add highlights afterwards. Ever since I went lifting crazy on that M. Graham Devil Doodle Finder painting, I've enjoyed using the technique to help give more dimension than just my gel pens alone would do with smaller, sharper highlights. I'm also happy to say that these three paints play nice with the Uniball Signo gel pen, which is one of the ones we've mentioned before will sometimes take on the underlying color of whatever it's placed on and go get itself ruined. No such problem here! So, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I really like these paints and I'm super excited to play with them more. I may have to snag a couple more tubes off of Jackson's at some point, but lord knows I've already got more paints than probably even a crazy person should have. I guess we'll see, eh? If fate and madness just so happen to accidentally throw a couple more tubes of PWC into my shopping cart, are there any colors you'd want to see tested out? It may be worth it to make a weird triad of non-primary colors just to see how they play together. P.S. If you haven't already, please consider throwing me a like and subscribe so we can keep this crazy train rolling on its tracks. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and pleasant surprises.